Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, we'll talk about uh, DC machines, separately excited DC machines, and primarily we'll discuss example 8.1 solved in the book. Before going into the solution of the problem, let's discuss an important theoretical uh, part that is called the armature reaction. Now, it is saying that if the field winding of a DC machines are connected to power supply, so this is the field winding connected to the power supply, so this will produce a magnetic field, and the rotor of the machine is turned by an external mechanical power, so we are turning the rotor by hand or by wind power or by turbine, etc. <coughs> then a voltage will be induced in the conductors of the rotor. So there will be a voltage induced across the conductors of the rotor. <laughs> now if we connect a load to the terminal of the machine, a current will flow through the armature winding. So if we are connecting uh, the load uh, because of the induced voltage, now the current will flow through the circuit including the armature winding. The current flow will produce a magnetic field of its own. So current flowing uh, in a conductor produces magnetic field. So it will produce a magnetic field of its own. Now remember there is a magnetic field produced by the field winding also. So what will be the effect of this? This will distort the original magnetic field of the machine's port. So the, the magnetic field produced due to this current flow will distort the original magnetic field and this distortion of the flux in a machine as the load increases is called the armature reaction. So this is called armature reaction that any current flowing will cause a magnetic field, will, will distort the original magnetic field and so it will distort the flux produced or reduce the amount of flux produced. So this is armature reaction. And the solution to this problem is that in the pole windings, in the pole faces, this is the pole, these are the field windings, this is armature, so we have the armature windings, and this is the pole face, so in the pole face also we put some windings, and this is called the compensating winding. So comp when there is compensating winding, that means uh, this will minimize the effect of armature reaction. Okay, now let's uh, come to problem, uh, or example 8.1. A 50 horsepower, 250 volt, 1200 revolutions per minute DC shunt motor with a compensating winding has an armature resistance of 0 0.6 ohms. So this is the circuit given in the book. Power supply going to field winding, supplying the field winding and also supplying the motor. And these are the elements given that the 6.0 uh, ohm, 0.06 ohm is the armature resistance. This resistance of the field is 50 ohm. And these are the, this is the total current and this is the field current and it is also divided as armature current. Now somehow I feel more comfortable to keep the field winding on the left hand side. So I have redrawn this. So this is the field winding and this circuit is the armature circuit so i'll i'll use this uh, to explain okay so the armature resistance has been given so this is the armature resistance its field circuit has a total resistance r adjustable plus r field of 50 ohm so r adjustable and r field is 50 ohm which produces a no load speed of 1200 rpms and there are 1200 turns per pole on the shunt winding. So the, the uh, shunt windings have 1200 RPMs per pole. Now find the speed of the motor when the input current is 100 amperes. So when we are giving a current of 100 amperes and when the input current is 200 amperes 
and when the input current is 300 ampere. So for three these uh, currents we have to find the speed of the motor and then finally we have to plot the torque and speed characteristics of the motor. Now since it is saying that the there is compensating winding so the effect of armature reaction is zero so we will not consider that now. Okay. Now the internal generated voltage of the DC machine that is the back EMF which is produced here with its speed expressed in revolutions per minute is given by so EA is the back EMF produced by the motor. Remember the motor when it is running it produces a back EMF which opposes the main power supply. So EA is given by constant K multiplied by flux produced by the field winding and multiplied by the speed of the motor. Since the field current in the machine is constant, in this case because the Vt is constant and the, all the resistances are constant, both Vt and field resistances are constant and since there are no armature reaction effects, so the flux will remain constant the flux in this motor will become constant. So this is also constant, this was already a constant. So we can say that Ea is directly dependent on the speed and from here we can say that let's say this is one speed, this uh, one voltage, induced voltage, this is another induced voltage. Because of this we will have this relation of K phi Nm1 and because of the second induced voltage we will have the relation K phi Nm2. So these two terms are constant, gets cancelled. So we can say that the induced voltage is directly proportional to the speed of the motor. So we'd use this formula. And from here, to find new speed, uh, we can divide the two voltages, divide, multiply by the speed 1. Okay, so the first given at no load, the speed of uh, uh, 1200 revolutions per minute. And what is the concept of no load? Let's that clarify that too. Uh, the motor at no load means if the motor is running with no physical load coupled to the shaft, that is no fan, compressor, grinding mill, etc. Nothing. The motor is said to be running at no load and when the motor is running at on no load small torque is required to overcome the friction of the windage losses and therefore the armature current IA is small. So torque very small torque is required and very small armature current is required and for all practical purposes we can assume that at no load the armature current is zero and the induced torque is also zero. So this is an assumption. Also we note that at no load armature current is zero as we assumed here therefore Ea is equal to Vt is equal to 250. How is that? Let's see from here. Vt is equal to this drop. Now since we are assuming that Ia is zero, therefore there is no voltage drop here. Therefore this voltage Ea is equal to Vt. That is what we are saying that at no load Ea is equal to Vt is equal to 250 volt. And now let's come to the uh, first question. Find the speed of the motor when its input current is 100 amperes. So we know that IL is equal to IA plus IF, IL is equal to IA plus IF and from here we can find IA to be IL minus IF and IF again from here we can write it that this voltage VT divided by the resistance so VT divided by RF is IF and now plugging in the values 100 ampere 250 volt and 50 ohms we get the armature current to be 95 amperes. And once we know the armature current, we can find this drop here. 
and so we can find EA. So we can say that EA is VT minus IARA from here and plugging in the values to 50 volt IA we found 95 ampere RA 0 0.06 so EA is 244.3 volt and now we can find the speed from this formula that we have learned so NM2 is EA2 divided by EA1 and multiplied by NM1 so this is EA2 the new voltage we found 244 original was 250 original speed was 1200 so the new speed is 1173 revolutions per minute and exactly same way we can find uh, for current 200 and current 300 so we just find the new ia by this formula 195 ampere found the new induced voltage ea by using this formula 238.3 and the new speed again using this formula is one 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 four four revolutions per minute so this is for 200 ampere and same way for 300 ampere we can find the new speed to be one one five one 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 five revolutions per minute so we found all three speeds now uh, we uh, need to plot the torque speed characteristics so this is the graph that we'll be using on one side there will be induced torque and the other side uh, the revolutions per minute the plot to plot the output characteristics of this motor it is necessary to find the torque corresponding to each value of speed so we have found the speed but we didn't we uh, didn't find torque so now we'll find induced torque at no load the induced torque is clearly zero we have discussed earlier that induced torque uh, or the torque required is very minimal which can be assumed to be zero so at no uh, load the induced torque will be zero that is what was the uh, no load speed 1200 so at 1200 the torque will be zero and torque is actually produced by the power so E and A the power will be cons uh, uh, converted into torque so T induced multiplied by the speed this is the formula E A A is equal to T induced multiplied by speed so from here T induced is E A W M now in the first case we had the line current, we had the uh, armature current, we found the e induced voltage and we had also found the speed. So plugging in this 244EA then IA95 and this omega M is actually 2 pi FM. So revolutions per second. So 2 pi revolutions per second we have this speed in revolutions per minute so we multiply uh, or divide that by 60 to get the revolutions per second and multiplied by 2 pi so this way we find the induced uh, torque 190 newton meter and similarly for the second one 388 newton meters and for the third case when I will I L was 300 587 newton meters now if you look we have found the three torques for these three speeds we need to plot speed versus torque so we'll use this these values and these three values and so our graph will look something like this so in the first case if you see 1173 will be somewhere here 1173 and at that the torque is 190 close to 200 so 190 so this is 190 similarly at 1144 so somewhere here the torque is less than 400 so 388 and at 1115 which is very close to this point 
the torque is 587 so this is how you plot the torque speed curve so i hope this gives you an understanding uh, as to how to solve this type of a problem and plot the torque speed characteristics thank you